Hello friends and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz and I made a card as part of a YouTube hop with Pixie Dust Designs using these die sets um, a little while ago, but really I made this card first and it is a box card using the spring box card die set. There's an A and a B, they come together that cuts out all the pieces for the box card and the tree. And then I'm also using the Woodland Critters set. Uh, that has, I think it's five big critters and a bunch of small critters and other scene elements. I love this card so much. It's like all the things I love. It's got cute, cute critters. It has an interactive mechanism. We're gonna make an interactive piece to the tree so the owl pops up out of the tree into the little hole. Um, it creates this little scene. This box card is quite big. So there are five layers, including this front piece that I just finished, and then three middle pieces and a back piece, and then the sides that hold it together. And it's pretty easy to assemble. So I am just using a little bit of dark green ink along each of those pieces to create a little dimension, but mostly because on the sides, there are little embossed details for the grass. And I really love the way adding just a little bit of ink makes those pop and stand out. So for those, I went over the entire piece. And then this is the larger layer that we're gonna glue kind of all of our bridge pieces to. Um, and you can see there are sort of score lines on there, really just to help layer everything together. Uh, I, go, I went over it with my greening from the bottom. We're gonna cover a lot of that up. I just didn't want a stark contrast between the bottom of that piece and the beginning of that layering piece um, with the embossed grass detail. The tree, the details on this tree are so pretty. Uh, so I'm using some vintage photo, just a really light layer and the ink sort of sinks into those nooks and crannies and the whole thing comes alive. I've got a piece of gray cardstock and I'm just trying to create a little bit of shading. This is gonna go behind the hole in our tree, right? So I'm kind of holding it up there to check it out. I'm using black soot, they're both black soot. My old, bigger ink pad <laughs> needs to be refilled apparently. So uh, yeah, I just kind of went around that to add a, a little dimension there as well. And then I'm gonna splatter everything with first some white pigment ink I actually wanted white acrylic paint, but I couldn't find one in my stash that wasn't dried out. I've had most of my paints for a decade or more. Oops. Um, but then I will come in with some gold metallic paint as well. I, I set this aside to dry and the paint dried beautifully. It's still pretty dry here in Nebraska. Um, so that was fine, but the white pigment ink wasn't dry because I didn't heat set it and I forgot. So heat set your white ink if you're gonna do it that way. This little piece, I cut it out in green thinking I was gonna put the sentiment on there, but then I decided to cut a hole in the front panel of our box card and I'm gonna create a window. So I've got the die for what would be like your sentiment and then I've cut the die for the grass out of acetate. Right, so I have two matching pieces and then I'm coming along with my scissors and I'm just trimming off the blades of the grass so that this is a little bit easier to line up. Normally, if I'm using acetate, I prefer a double-sided adhesive, but there wasn't a lot left of this panel. It is very thin. Um, it's not a big deal. We're gonna strengthen it with the acetate, but the double-sided tape wasn't gonna work. So I'm using Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and I'm just using my finger to make sure I don't get too much and it's not gonna squeeze out the side. Um, but this holds really well and it grabs fairly quickly, which I kind of needed. This, this project, it was a labor of love, mostly because I kept getting interrupted. My kids would come in or I'd have to go pick somebody up from baseball practice. I don't know about you, but it, trying to find dedicated time to get everything done for a single card is a challenge in my life. So here are the side pieces. We're gonna assemble the box. I'm adding on those side panels and you can see there's kind of a flap, a short flap and a tall flap. So the short flap is the front and the taller flap is the back. Um, and then I am gonna start figuring out where all of my pieces go. Since this is the front and I've created a window with that grass, 
I have to clip it a little shorter. I will use double-sided tape for that when we go to assemble the very last pieces of the box, but I'm just double-checking for now to make sure that that piece is gonna fit on there. And then I am gonna wrap these around the back of my box. That tall panel that doesn't have any flaps on it, that grass panel is the back. And so I'm lining this up using the grid from my mat to make sure everything is straight. And I'm gonna add a second layer to that back panel when I go to decorate that side, that's where I'm gonna put my greeting and a couple of the leftover die cuts. So it's okay to me that those flaps are visible. Otherwise, if you weren't gonna add another layer, I would probably put those um, inside the box. For these other three panels, I am just folding over the tabs on each side and I'm kind of figuring out where I want them. This is tiered, it's not super obvious, but you can do sort of stadium seating, if you will where it gets a little taller each row. And that really makes it so that you can see your critters or whatever else you're gonna stick in here um, more visible. I am using the Woodland Critters from Pixie Dust Designs for this, but you could use your stamped critters. You could use die cuts from somebody else. Like this is so, so versatile. And I the tree coming with it, that I think is really unique. So I'm adding my grass pieces to the left panel and I am just lining them up, trying to make sure that they're all, all parallel. And then I fold that flat back, add some glue and then press it flat. Okay, so that piece is flat. Then I will fold each of those grass pieces at the tab, but I'm keeping the side panel flat against my mat. Then I will add glue to each of those tabs. I'm just making sure that none of the glue kind of got off the tab and is seeping underneath it. And I will press that other side panel flat on top of it. When I glue it together like that, it ensures that my box card will fold flat, okay? Um, that you can mail it. So now I have added a little bit of double-sided tape to each of those little tiny slivers of a side panel that are left. And I am going to add my front panel. I just, I wanted to be able to put something underneath there. I wanted it to look like things were crawling around in the grass and you were getting a sneak peek at this extra hidden scene that was going on. So um, if I were doing this again, I would back up that second layer of grass just a little bit so I had a little more room. So this is the Woodland Critters. It's the back of the packaging and I love that the pictures of the critters are on there. Um, it's pretty easy to tell what goes with what because like if I'm cutting out the squirrel, all the pieces of the squirrel are on the same die. And I really appreciate that because then it, it's easier to find things and I will often cut all of it out at the same time. So I'm not sitting there going, well, whose eyeball is this, right? Uh, so this is my little snail. There's some debossed detail in the, the sort of swirl of the shell. Um, so I did off camera, I went over that really lightly with just whatever was left over on my little blue ink blending tool um, to make that stand out a little more. I'm in love with these ladybugs. They're two pieces, that's it. They're quick and easy, and I want to put them everywhere. There are two separate mushrooms in this set, uh, and I'm, I think I'm just using the one today. So I cut the base of the mushroom out twice, once from some white shimmer cardstock and once from like a taupe cardstock, and then I cut the top off because I wanted that white detail but there is this other piece of the mushroom that goes right under the red cap, and you can add that in instead if you like, but I wanted white behind the dots of the mushroom as well. Here is the teeniest, tiniest acorn. It's so cute, and it's got that sort of debossed detail as well, and the trunk of this tree, when I was ink blending everything, I ink blended um, the top of that that wood so it's got some little like rings of wood that are visible in there too then so in the other video i was asking everybody is this a porcupine or a hedgehog please weigh in because right now we're a house divided um, i went porcupine on that video so i'm gonna say hedgehog on this one i love a good hedgehog um i i don't know how to tell i am not nature um this is a secret I don't like the outdoors. 
I'm an indoor kind of girl, but I love critter dies and critter stamps. Give me all the nature made out of paper. Uh, for this one, I also took um, that the nose there. I cut it out twice and I did one in pink to create a little rosy cheek for my hedgehog. There is a little indentation dot in his eye. So I have used just a little bit of white acrylic paint and my super duper pokey tool to add the tiniest little dot to create a bit of um, like a, a reflection in his eye. I have a lot more control with my white paint and the pokey tool than I do with a gel pen. I don't know what it is. I fight with the gel pen. If you've got one that you really like, let me know. I can sometimes get the Jelly Roll Bold Number 10 to work well for me, but not always. Um, my number five, forget about it. Like it's, it's clogged half the time and it makes a bigger dot than I think I'm going to get. And then I do a practice one and it looks perfect. Anyway, I help me out with a white pen, um, stick it in the comments. I would really appreciate that. I'm putting my owl together here. So there are different pieces for the belly and then that light blue piece that we're going to layer the eyes onto. Um, my best tip for that one is to make sure you put those two pieces on at the same time because they kind of nestle together. Uh, and yeah, it, I think it's just easiest if you're kind of working with them at the same time. Then I cut the eyes and the nose and the feet out. They're all on the same die. I cut them all out of orange cardstock, but I just use like a black alcohol marker or a Sharpie or whatever to color in the eyes so I don't have to cut them out separately. Like that's not necessary. And then with my little white paint trick, um, you can always like let the paint dry and go over it with your black marker again if it doesn't look the way you want it to and then try again. I'm trimming down the sides of my gray ink blended panel uh, to make sure it's going to fit within the tree. And then I'm pulling out, this is the Paper Crafting Magic Stamp Set from Trinity Stamps. Lan Fawn has something similar too. I own both of them. I use them both. But I want to be able to stamp something that indicates that there's movement here, right? So you should lift up on this. The pull would have been sideways. So I'm just going to use a little arrow um, and I've stamped that onto the same cardstock I used for the tree. And then I have a piece of white cardstock. This is an inch and a quarter. And then the length, I don't even know what length it needs to be yet. So we're just going to keep trimming it down <laughs> until it fits. Um, I'm going to stick my owl inside that hole and at least trim down the bottom for now. And then I'm kind of figuring out like, where does this arrow mechanism piece need to go? I'm going to be adding foam tape on the tree and I need to make sure that the tree will be stable, but that I'm not going to block the movement of that uh, little lever. So I'm adding a second piece of that craft cardstock just to make it sturdier because that's really where all of the force will be. And then when I go to add that onto my panel, I'm going to glue it right underneath the owl's feet. It doesn't need to be any lower or higher than that. And that gives me the, the best bang for my real estate buck on this mechanism, right? It's going to leave some space at the bottom of the tree where I can still put foam tape. I have taken my one millimeter foam tape. This is pretty thin. And I am just running along the edges with my Y11 Ohuhu art marker. It matches my craft cardstock pretty well. Can you see the foam tape if you look at it sideways? Yeah, a little bit. Is anybody looking? Probably not, but I am. So, <laughs> so I often will color my foam tape just to hide it a little bit better. I am sticking my owl right behind the tree. I'm pulling it all the way down and making a mark of where that lever is going to be. And then up to where the owl will peek out where I want him to stop and making another mark. Then I'll mark that white card stock so that even with the owl down below the circle, I know that that will fit fully inside of my tree and then I'll trim it off right at that mark. So here again is my gray panel and I've got to trim this down too. I want it to fit all the way inside of that tree. I've used my pencil to mark it and I'm going to cut very generously. I don't want to cut it too small. I don't want to create a catch point for my mechanism, but you'll notice the owl's upside down right now. So the white cardstock and the owl, the, it, all of the dimension is building up towards the front of that piece and not towards the back. I don't have anything sticking out towards the back. That was specifically because I didn't want it to catch on that gray piece. 
Okay, so I've glued the gray piece to the back tree. The back tree, uh, it cuts the hole out of that one too. It's the same die, um, but really I've now glued the little piece that fits in the hole, I've glued that in there. I'm adding my foam tape and the side of the tree that's at the top of the screen, right? I have left a gap in the foam tape where our lever will move. I need all of that space for the owl to go up and down. But aside from that, I want to make sure that I'm well supported. I'm pulling my owl all the way down and I'm double checking that bottom piece of foam tape acts like a stopper. I don't want it to accidentally go too far down into the tree. I added a little bit of glue all along my foam tape just to give me a little bit of wiggle room and make sure I get a perfect fit here. And immediately I'm trying to move that owl to make sure that he's not stuck and accidentally glued shut in there. I did not put foam tape behind that branch. It would have been a real undertaking and I didn't think it was necessary. That is the beauty of the thin foam tape. So I just glued the two layers of the branch together. Next, I'm gonna add my tree into the box part of my card. I would love to be able to put the tree a little further down in there um, just for sturdiness, but I have to make sure that that lever is all the way down before I glue it. Otherwise, I might make it so that I can't pull the owl all the way down out of the opening in the tree. Ultimately, it's enough, actually. This holds pretty well, and it's well balanced. I was a little worried that the box card then would, would have some weird weight distribution and might tip over. Not a problem at all, but just something to keep an eye on, especially if you're adding a bunch of pieces to that tree or if you're gluing less of it to the card base. I've added a leaf. There's two leaves in this die set and then my little birdie up in the tree. Uh, and then now I'm, I'm gonna start adding my ladybugs. So I've got one kind of climbing up the outside of the tree. And then here's our little surprise, right? We have some ladybugs on the outside of the box card and some ladybugs back behind that acetate panel. This one on the front, I'm using double-sided adhesive, mostly because I was too lazy to wait for glue to dry. <laughs> I'm gonna glue one on later anyway, I don't, I don't know. Um, and then the ones on the inside, this one had a spot that was non-negotiable um, before I remembered that I hadn't used paint. I had used pigment ink for my white splatter. I put my thumb in it and I smeared it. So I'm covering up that little smeared part. There's always a way to fix it, right? I wasn't starting over. And then I am just staggering the ladybug. So one's kind of facing up and then the next one's kind of facing down. And we're just creating this little sort of wonky line of ladybugs. I have my squirrel here. I love that squirrel. I would love to know which of the critters is your favorite. I, I can't decide. Maybe it's the ladybug. Maybe it's the bird. But those are the small ones from the big ones. There are actually two critters we're not even using in here. There's a fox, an adorable fox, and there is a fawn, right? It is an awesome set. And these are about the same size as a lot of like critter stamped images. So you can kind of interchange if you were gonna use a stamped image in a scene, you could use one of these in a scene. Um, Lawn Fun has a little set of like Christmas hats. There's like a Santa hat and I think like an elf hat um, and they fit on these. I, I know it's <laughs> like April, May when I'm posting this. Um, and nobody but me is thinking about Christmas, but every time I make a card, I'm like, how else can I use these dies? These are coming back in the holidays for me. Like I, hands down, these are coming back. Okay, so on the back, I have cut that same panel. We have a green one on the box card. I cut it again from some cream cardstock and I went around the edges with some green ink. And then this is actually the back of that die cut. So I took my bone folder and went around and just sort of smoothed out the edges so it doesn't look like the back side of a die cut. And I will add that to my box card. The happy birthday is from the Spellbinders Thanks Enclosed. It's an enormous sentiment set and they all have this same uh, script. It's scripty but wonky. I don't know. I love that font. Uh, I have a few pieces left over from what I die cut and assembled originally. So I'm adding my little tree stump 
And then I have another leaf and an acorn that I will add to the back of this card as well. It leaves me just a little spot for a greeting too. If I feel like I have a lot to say, I will write it on the tree. <laughs> I love this card. I know I made it, but at it, the owl pops up and there's a little surprise and all that. I hope you like it too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Consider subscribing and I will see you next time.